live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Wrapping up day three, three days of coverage, wall to wall, with the Cube, HP Discover. HP Discover Social is our digital experience site. All the social data floating in, the crowd chats going on, the video, the on-demand video, exclusive content from HP, from Wikibon, from SiliconANGLE, and from all around the web, so check that out. Register, we'll keep in touch with you after the event. Check out wikibon.com, check out siliconangle.com for all the news. SiliconANGLE TV, Jeff, this stuff we, we do, I don't know how many interviews we did this week, 50 maybe? All up on SiliconANGLE TV within, you know, hours. Some of them within hours. The crew's yeah, really so doing a good job of turning them really around. It's really been good. This is our fifth, sorry, sixth year at HP Discover. Uh, we've also done the ones overseas. You know, we're seeing the, the ship slowly turn. Uh, big messaging this year around the idea economy. A lot of people criticizing that, Jeff. Uh, John Furrier, you know, called it nailing jello to a wall. Uh, Quentin Hardy criticized it. I said, on the other hand, I thought it was the mainspring of the digital economy. Ideas are the mainspring of the digital economy, but the thing where I do agree with Furrier is HP still a product company, and they got to put the products in front of people, but I think they've done a reasonable job of doing that. What's your take been on HP Discover? But I really like today we had a ton of customers on, and I think the idea economy when Meg introduced it at the keynote is a little bit tricky because she's using examples like Uber and Greenfield where people can build these applications up from scratch. But I thought it was interesting some of the customers we had today that really demonstrate what those idea economy looks like even in a legacy situation. For instance, the 20th Century Fox guest that we had on talking about their entire business moving from physical assets, selling DVDs, to digital assets transformational, not a new business, not a greenfield opportunity. The Home Depot ge uh, guest talking about delivering apps to people on the store so they can price shop, they can find two by fours, they can buy the Christmas tree in the parking lot. So these are old school, hard goods companies, traditional, that are really seeing this digital transformation. So it can happen and it can happen fast. Now HP is an infrastructure provider, they're still really an infrastructure provider, and as we know, cloud's got to sit somewhere. Right? It's still about compute, it's still about store, and it's still about networking. But I do like the fact that they're embracing this digitization because I do think it can happen much quicker than a lot of people give credit, um, either in the case of 20th Century Fox for the entire distribution change, or again, this customer-driven experience expectation based on the mobile phone. Your last guest talking about his kid getting insurance for his new house, didn't want to talk to anybody. It's a very different kind of interaction when the application is a, a, a more increasing interface between companies and their customers. Well, I think, okay, so now the other big, and it is happening, you're absolutely right. The other big news, of course, is the, the split between HP Inc. and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. That is big news. HP is splitting, huge company splitting, you know, hundred billion dollar plus company splitting into two Fortune 50 companies. This is a big deal. Uh, we had the head of operations at, at HP talk about the complexity of that split. I thought that was kind of interesting. They gave people a little peek back inside. Um, they used it as a marketing uh, vehicle, basically saying, hey, we've learned a lot. We're documenting everything. We'll help you. If you're going through mergers, acquisitions, splits, divestitures, we can help. Um, I think you know, we'll see how that all goes. I mean, it seems like they're on a very tight schedule, but um, and they're managing those risks, HP, IT people working around the clock. But essentially what you have now is the, the printer and PC company split off, the ink company split off, which is a you know going to be a large, predictable, cash flow, kind of dividend company. And HP Enterprise is where, Hewlett Packard Enterprise is where all the growth is going to be. Are we going to have to stop calling it HP? That's going to be weird, isn't <laughs> it? Um, but that's supposed to be the growth company. Now, I have said HP has to shrink to grow. Uh, it has been dealing with the shrink part pretty well, the growth part hasn't been there, but there's pockets of growth. The enterprise group grew 5% in constant currency. We had Antonio Neri on. He was very excited and positive about the outlook. Uh, so that's a positive area. Certainly 3PAR, 3PAR's been meteoric. 
Uh, the 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 all flash piece has been booming, but the legacy storage business has been in decline, and, and the new stuff is still not big enough to offset the old. So we got to see some growth there. I think you will uh, with three par with three par gaining share. Networking networking has been a bummer. The last you know quarter was a real bummer in networking, but the Aruba shiny toy could be the next three par uh, for HP. So that's all good. Services, you know, technology services, you know, they're going to drag along. Right. Um, the other piece of concern to me has been software. Software's got to grow faster, and that's something that I really want to see. Software declined, I think, 2% in, in constant currency. Software has to be a growth area for HP. I mean, the fact that software is not growing and software's the, the, the growth opportunity for HP, not only because it's a growth market, but also because it's a small portion of HP's portfolio today. It needs to be a bigger software company. Vertica, Autonomy, you know, the whole Haven stuff, infrastructure software. I'm still struggling with HP software. I've been asking that question. What is your software strategy? It seems like some infrastructure, certainly security, certainly some big data. I can't put my finger on it. Um, I really think that you know, that's something that Robert Youngjohns really has to nail. Uh, they're going more after open source, which is great going to get leverage out of that, but you know the whole software piece of that business is huge upside for a company like HP, and um, and it's got to reach out to developers. That's something that John Furrier would, would talk about extensively is the developer leverage. So that's something that I'd like to see. Anything else you'd add? Well, I was going to say, the, the interesting thing was some, some relatively big greenfield opportunities. SAR was on talking about really going after the legacy telco infrastructure space with really kind of the classic enterprise shift into x86 and commodity hardware and the orchestration of all those components. Uh, big opportunity, no really big installed base, so I think that's a great opportunity. And also, I'm interested in your take when we had Milan on, first guest of the day, talking about how he measures his time at HP from despair, hope, optimism, excitement, and now high fives and exuberance. And he, and he made an interesting statement, kind of twofold. One, that only two to three percent of some of their sales are in this all flash array, so he sees that as a huge opportunity. 97% of the market is still available. And then he also said, you know, they're starting to sell more flash than these 15K drives. How do you take that read? Is this, is this an inflection point in the storage business for them? I think that um, it is. I mean, I think that the shift is on. I mean, they, I think David Floyd is right. Now, whether or not it happens a you know, year and a half from now, which we, he has predicted, where flash costs decline to the point of hard disk and actually overtake them or undertake them in this case, uh, we are at an inflection point. Spinning disks are the last bastion of mechanical movement in computers. It's the only piece that moves. That moves. Right, that, that, that you care about. Printers obviously move, but they're not in the path. Right. Right? They're not right. getting in your way. Um, think of a military convoy. All the trucks in the convoy have to slow down so that the slowest truck can keep up. That slowest truck in the convoy is the spinning disk drive. And it's, everything else is going at like lightning speed and then you got the spinning disk. Even though if you've ever seen a disk drive spin at those yeah. shows, it looks like it's really going fast. No, in computer terms, it's so slow. So now flash changes that. And not only does it do that, it catalyzes uh, uh, domino effects to other parts of the stack, the I.O. stack. So there's these protocols built up knowing that I got this slow spinning disk. Applications are written knowing I got this slow spinning disk. When I do an I.O., I can go off and do some other things. All that's going to change. The digital economy is all about real time. It's all about you know speed. It's all about affecting outcomes. So that's going to change, and it's going to change dramatically. So I think, yes, we are at a huge inflection point. Yeah. No doubt about it. I'm also curious to see how Discover the Show is going to change. Like uh, I said, during one of the breaks, I took a walk around and you go to the other side of the show and there's medical equipment and there's all the personal gear, there's huge printers and giant you know, wrapped cars with phenomenal graphics. There's so much different stuff here that again, I can see from kind of a who's here and what they're doing. You know, it makes more sense to not have all these components kind of bunched in together. I can see you know, maybe a little bit more smaller, tighter, efficient, uh, focused. Uh, discover. So we'll be curious to see how that evolves over time. I'm sure London will be more the same. All the plans are well in place. But I would imagine, you know, with this split, what happens to Discover as a show? Um, well, I, and how's I, that going to kind of morph? Well, I'm right. I mean, a uh, very good question is what will happen at Discover 
in London, will it be a Hewlett Packard Enterprise show? You know, I mean, really, that's when, when Meg gets up and talks, that's the, the primary content is enterprise content. Right, so right. So you would, you would think then the split is going to be complete by then. You would think that the, the London show would reflect that. Uh, I would hope. Yeah. Yeah, so. A lot more green. Yeah, good. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Well, listen, thanks very much for helping out with John away. Good three days. But a good, good three days, good two days with you. Um, lots of guests. So, yeah, check out. Silicon Angle TV, SiliconAngle.tv. We'll have all this content up. It's not already. It'll be up very shortly. Uh, check out HPDiscover.social. That's the digital experience that we've been talking about. All the research lives on Wikibon.com. SiliconAngle.com has got all the news. Crowdchat, Crowdchat.net slash HPDiscover. Those Crowdchats will be archived. Uh, really appreciate everybody watching. Thanks to Leonard. Patrick, great job. Alex Wilcox, great to have you back. Bert Lattimore. Hanging back, Andrew, Andrew and John in, back in Boston. at Boston. John doing all the stuff that that you do. Mark Hopkins and Art and, and Dean on the HP Discover. Uh, Sam's uh, working on social back there. site. It's a huge crew. Sam cranking away on the schedule. Really awesome. Kristen Nicole, all the writers in uh, Silicon Angle, real time blogging. Really appreciate all that. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. This is the Cube. We will be next week. Uh, we're at Nutanix. Nutanix, and we're also at Hadoop in Summit in the San Jose. And we're at Hadoop Summit in San Jose. So watch for that. Watch SiliconANGLE TV for the schedules, and we'll see you next time.